People often ask us if you can roll on chalk paint by Annie Sloan, and you absolutely can. Um, there's a few tools I love to use when I'm rolling on paint. Um, the chalk paint is a little bit thick, so you may find that you might want to water it down with water just a little bit, maybe 10% when you're rolling the paint. We love to use these low nap velour rollers. The less texture on the roller, the better, because it's going to leave very little texture in your paint as you roll it out. And another great tool is um, Annie's flat brushes. So she has a small brush and a large brush. When I'm doing cabinet doors, I often like to use the small brush just for the smaller details, but you do have a large brush available to you if you have a larger project. I'm going to paint the back side of this door just to demonstrate rolling the paint on and then I'll flip it over and go on to the next step. I'll use my small flat brush. The reason I love these brushes, Annie developed these brushes for getting a smoother finish with your paint. That way you can apply the paint a little bit thinner and it goes on just a little bit smoother than with your regular natural bristle brush, um, the larger brushes. So I'm just going to fill this area in first, and I'll do this one as well with my flat brush. I put a little bit of my old white paint in a paint tray, and I've got my velour roller here. I'm offloading the paint so I don't apply too much at once, and then I'm just going to roll the paint on. You can see that this nice um, low nap roller leaves very little texture in the paint so I'm going to get a nice smooth finish in the end. I'm going to cover the surface and if I want to I can kind of roll over those areas I brushed as well just to change the texture there if I really don't want to have any of those brush strokes on my piece. I'm going to apply this in thin coats and let it dry completely between layers. So I'm just going to flip this over. It's going to make a bit of a mess, but that's okay. This side is dry already. I've rolled the paint on. I've let it dry. Between co coats, I want to use a nice fine sandpaper, maybe a 220 grit. And I'm just going to use that paper or my sanding block. And I'm going to lightly sand the surface just to make sure that I remove any little you know, brush strokes or any hairs that might be in there in the center where I use my, my brush or on here if I have a little you know, blip from my roller, I can just sand that out. Once I've done that, I'm going to apply another coat. If you feel it's a little bit dusty, you can give it a quick, quick wipe. And then we'll carry on. We'll repeat the steps. This is coat number two. And you can see already, even with thinning my paint a little bit, my coverage is amazing. I'm going to do the same thing as before, a little bit of paint on my roller, offloading it so that I don't put it on too heavy. Nice thin coat rolled over the whole surface. And I'm going to again just roll in here. I want to change the texture of my paint just a little bit. Now with this technique, you don't have to worry as much about direction. If I was brushing my paint on, on a cabinet door, most often I'll paint in the direction of the wood grain, um, especially if I'm going to glaze my door afterwards, which in this case we are going to. But that's it. Two coats of paint applied.